today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savell. How many of you here tonight truly want your 2024 to be a year of progression, advancement, promotion, and your highest expectations fulfilled? Amen. That's the word of the Lord for us. So then you have to ask yourself this question. Am I through making excuses? Am I through making excuses and am I ready to put first things first? It's always easy to make excuses when you don't want to be obedient to what God says in His Word. Now, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus is giving us some instructions that He's expecting us to obey. He didn't say these things because He couldn't think of anything else to say. He didn't say these things because He was trying to fill pages. <laughs> he said these things for our benefit because they work. Amen? So let's look at Matthew 6. This is the scripture that the Lord gave Pastor Justin to base this conference on. First things first. And notice in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And all these things, you'll have to look up a few verses earlier and you discover that all these things are a reference to the material necessities of life, food, clothing, shelter, finances. So you don't have to seek those things if you seek God and his kingdom and his righteousness first. Then all these things will be added unto you. It's amazing that most Christians do everything they can do and then right at the end of the journey they decide, uh, maybe I ought to do what God said. Why is he always the last resort? Matthew chapter 6 is talking about priorities. And for most people, including Christians, they have misplaced priorities. Amen. So notice here, this is all about priorities. It's all about establishing things in your life, putting first things first. What God says is important you should determine it's important to you as well. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Say that with me. What God says is important God says is also important to me. Important. So the fact that he says, seek his kingdom first, then that sounds like it's very, very important to God. And it should be important to us. Now we discovered from the Amplified Bible that it's translated as seek ye first his kingdom, his way of doing and being right. And we talked about that at the opening service of this conference on Sunday night about seeking and striving after his way of doing and being right. So once again, if you're not, if that is not a priority to you, then it's nobody else's fault but yourself that you're not enjoying what he promised you would enjoy if you put this as a priority. So you have nobody else to blame. Amen. I know it's always easier to blame somebody else, but it's not your wife's fault. It's not your husband's fault. It's not your boss's fault. It's not your pastor's fault. And it most definitely is not my fault. <laughs> Amen. So priorities, say priorities. priorities. Seek first. That's a priority. Wouldn't you say that's a priority? Amen. If, if I was going to some uh, extremely wealthy businessman who has proven over the years that he knows what it takes to make money, he knows what it takes to earn money, to generate money, to invest money, and to always have money, and I asked him, uh, would you teach me how to do that? And he said, well, the first thing you do Wouldn't that be important? Yeah. Now, this is the first thing I learned, Jerry. If you want to be successful, here's the first thing I learned. Well, then you pay close attention to what he's about to say. 
So Jesus is talking about being successful in life, living your best life, living the life that he's chosen for you. So first things first. So the problem, once again, is most Christians have misplaced priorities. They want God's best, but they're not willing to do what it takes to acquire them. Amen. Amen. Anybody want God's best? Now, let me ask you this. Are you willing to do what is required to acquire them? Amen. Amen. So that means, and I say this all the time. I just, I did some programs this morning and, and I said it and I told the people, I said, you've heard me say this thousands of times. And if you watch our broadcast, you're going to hear me say it thousands of times in the future. You've got to make a quality decision to spend quality time in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And nobody else can do that for you. It, it's something you have to decide to do. Okay? So notice a lot of people, and I'm talking about Christians, they always come up with a rational justification as to why they can't do what the Word says to do. Well, I don't have time. Well, you don't understand. Well, I have, I have other things that are more important. What's more important? What's more important than learning God's way of doing things? What could be more important than following Jesus' instructions? If you want to live your best life, what could be more important than following his instructions? You know, the Bible says in James chapter one, verse 22, be ye doers of the word. Now this is not my sermon. This is my introduction. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. You know, there's churches full of Christians all over the world that are hearers only. They're, they're not doers and, and the reason they don't experience God's best is simply because they only hear, but they don't do. They don't apply, you know, and usually there's some kind of what they think is a legitimate excuse as to why not. There are no legitimate excuses as to why you can't be a doer of the word. He said, do it, then do it. Amen. So I said, you don't have to be so matter of fact. Yes, I do. I remember one time I was out at Fred Price's church. Of course, Brother Price, this many years ago, he was still a young man and he and I were very close friends and, and I was in his church and, and boy, he laid down the law. I mean, he laid down the law. He, 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 he told the people when he got ready to lay hands on them at the end, he said, now everybody wants me to lay hands on them, come on up to the front. Then he said, now, I want you to put your foot on that line, toe on that line. Don't be standing back like this. Put your toe on that line all the way across the front. Hey, what did I tell you? Put your toe on the front of that line. Don't be standing back here like this. That's the reason why you're not blessed. You don't follow instructions. <laughs> I told Fred after the service, I said, boy, you run this place like a boot camp. He said, you got to brother. You got to so you can get people to finally learn to follow instructions. Amen. So notice here, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only deceiving your own selves. The passion translation says, don't just listen to the word of truth and then uh, refuse to do it because that is the essence of self-deception. That is the essence of self-deception. The message translation says, very bluntly, act on what you hear. Look at your neighbor and say, act on what you hear. And then James goes on to say that if you are a doer of the word, verse 25 says, you'll be blessed in your deed. In other words, if you, uh, if you are obedient to act on what you hear and what you read and, 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 and what you meditate upon from God's word, then blessings will come into your life. That's God's promise. Doers of the word are blessed in their deed. Anybody want to be blessed in their deed? I certainly do. So I've endeavored for the last 55 years to be a doer of the word and it's working, I might add. 
I heard, uh, or I read, I didn't hear this because I wasn't born yet, but I read one time that Benjamin Franklin said, <laughs> it's quite a, quite a statement. He said, I've never known a man who was good at making excuses, who was good at anything else. Somebody say, ouch. (laughs) I never met a man who was good at making excuses, who was good at anything else. Amen. So don't make excuses as to why you can't put first things first. How many of you here tonight truly want your 2024 to be a year of progression, advancement, promotion, and your highest expectations fulfilled. Amen. That's the word of the Lord for us. So then you have to ask yourself this question. Am I through making excuses? Am I through making excuses? And am I ready to put first things first? So I want you to turn and ask your neighbor that. Are you through making excuses? And are you ready to put first things first? Amen. Now, if you remember on Sunday night, uh, we read from the Amplified Bible that seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness is, is defined as striving after his way of doing and being right. His way of doing and being right works. Amen. Would you agree to that? Say this with me. Doing things God's way. Always works. works. Say it again. Doing things God's way way always works. works. Now, I want to make this statement to you, and I'm still in my introduction. I haven't got to my message yet. (laughs) Even though Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How many of you believe you've been redeemed from the curse of the law? There are some Christians who are still living under the effects of it or characteristics of it. And you can read those in Deuteronomy chapter 28. The first 13 verses talk about the blessings. And the remaining verses in that chapter talk about the curses. And you can see uh, what the curses do and what they, how they affect a person's life. And even though we have been redeemed from the curse, there are still Christians that are living under the effects of it. For instance, one of the, one of the curses is uh, you never prosper. Uh, you sow seed and you reap little. That's under the curse. And yet there are many Christians that are still living under the effects of that. They never prosper. It seems like uh, they take three steps forward and four steps back. They, they never get ahead. Now that doesn't make them bad people, but there's got to be a reason why that's happening. And inquiring minds want to know. (laughs) Amen. Now, let me give you this verse. I'm still in my introduction. (laughs) Proverbs 26 verse 2 says, The curse causeless shall not come. The curse causeless shall not come. In other words, uh, the, the curse or the effects of the curse in a person's life can only come if there is a justified cause. Or you might say it this way, they opened the door to it. And that's what a lot of Christians have done. They opened the door for the effects of the curse to take place and manifest in their lives. Now, get ready because what I'm about to preach to you is um, not your normal church message. This is a message that I would normally preach in an evangelistic crusade. And some of you in here tonight, I don't know, uh, I don't know all of you like Pastor Justin does because I'm gone all the time. You've heard me say it before. I'm the founder of this church, but I'm the worst attending member because I'm always gone. And that's, that's, that's my assignment, you know. The Lord just told Carolyn and I to establish a place where people could come and, and hear the uncompromising word of faith and love people that have been hurt, okay? And, 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 that's, that's the purpose of this church. And I can't pastor it. I'm not a pastor. I have endeavored to pastor before, but I'm, that's not, that's not my, my real calling. Yeah. Amen. It's like anybody uh, uh, ever heard of, uh, I believe his name was 
Jesse Winthrop, Winthrop. He, was, he was the pastor of Souls Harbor in Harlem. Does anybody remember the name? I know his first name was Jesse, Pastor Jesse. And uh, we were on TBN together one time, years ago. And Paul Crouch was interviewing us. And he said, now, Pastor Jesse, I understand you have 13 kids. He said, yeah, but my real calling is pastoring. <laughs> so uh, my real calling is not pastoring. Okay. Now, I, I admire Justin. Amen. He's a pastor. He has a pastor's heart. I, I, I could not ask for anyone better. And I trust him and I love him. And he's my pastor. I told him last night after the service that that was a, a, a wonderful message and you're my pastor. Amen. He's my pastor. Hallelujah. And, and he, does, he does a wonderful job at it because that's where his anointing is. Amen. 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 You know, if, if I was pastoring, like, like <laughs> Brother Copeland one time, he was, we, were in, we were in London and he had a, a pastor's meeting before we started the, the week's convention. Had all them pastors there. And at the time I was pastoring our first church here in Fort Worth, we called it Overcoming Faith Center. And uh, later I merged it with Brother Harold Nichols Church because I'm not a pastor, but I, I pastored that church for several years. And so I was pastoring at the time and traveling. And Brother Copeland, I mean, he was doing his best to try to encourage these pastors. But boy, it was coming, he was coming down on them. I mean, he didn't cut him any slack at all. Finally, he just said, I don't know what I'm saying. Jerry, get up here and finish this, you know, because <laughs> I had pastoral experience and he never had. Amen. So what somebody who's never had pastoral experience have to say to pastors <laughs> other than uh, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, dismiss, let's show, show up tonight. That's about all you can say. Amen. So, Justin is a pastor and you get pastoral messages every week here. Praise God. Now, a lot of times because I'm traveling, uh, depending on the time zones, I get to watch the services before I go into my service, wherever I might be. Okay. So I try to stay up with what's happening here and uh, don't think I'm just out running around having a ball and <laughs> sightseeing and eating in fancy restaurants and staying in nice hotels and you're suffering here in Crowley. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm staying on top. Praise God. Amen. So notice here, the curse causeless shall not come. Uh, you could say uh, the, the curse without just cause cannot come. In other words, people have to open the door to it. And I'm talking about people who've been redeemed from the curse. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're not supposed to live under the curse. Right. We're redeemed from the curse, but Christians can open the door to the effects of the curse. Yeah. In other words, give a just cause for it happening in their lives. Now, some of you may have not, uh, never heard a message like this, and I'm still in the introduction. But just get ready, praise God. I believe it's going to help you. I believe there's some, some freedom coming tonight. Glory to God. Amen. Now, let me, let me say this to you. I don't want to overlook anything I've written down because I've been writing since 3.30 yesterday afternoon. When we are striving to pursue God's way of doing and being right, then we prevent the adversary from putting the effects of the curse on our lives. Let me say it again. If we are putting first things first and we are pursuing God's way of doing and being right, then Satan has no legal right. We don't open the door to him. The curse can't come on us without just cause if we're doing what Jesus told us to do. Does that make sense to you? Okay. And if we are doing that, then 
the New International or the New Living Translation says this, an undeserved curse can't come. An undeserved curse can't come, meaning uh, you didn't open the door to it. You were doing what God's word said to do. You were doing first things first and you don't deserve that curse or the effects of it coming on your life. Does that make sense to you? Now, the new uh, living translation implies that it will have no effect on its intended victim. Hallelujah. It will have no effect on its intended victim, meaning you. So if you don't open the door to it, then it can't, it can't function in your life. Hallelujah. So always, always coming behind, that's under the curse. Because the Bible says we're to be the head and not the tail. The Bible says one of the blessings is you shall lend and not borrow. If you're always the borrower, then that's an effect of the curse. Let me try this side of the auditorium. If you're always coming behind and you're never ahead and you're not prospering, those are the effects of the curse. Well, now, Brother Jerry, you just don't understand my background. No, I don't have anything to do with it. You don't understand how I was raised. That has nothing to do with it. I wasn't raised knowing these things. I was raised on a farm. I was born on a farm in Vicksburg, Mississippi in the sticks. My grandfather bought that place in 1927. It's where my dad was raised. It's where I was born. And my dad grew up being called white trash. He was, they were so poor. And of course, I heard all the stories of how poor he was, you know. And he made up his mind, his, his children were not going to live that way. Now, if we'd have stayed in Vicksburg, Mississippi under my grandfather, I, I would have probably lived that way for the rest of my life. But, but I don't think my dad knew it at the time. I didn't know it at the time. But the Holy Spirit, I believe, was behind us leaving Vicksburg, moving to Shreveport, Louisiana, wound up living on the same street Carolyn lived on. Later, we married. Later, I came to the Lord. Later, I learned the word. And the rest is history. Amen. But I, I wasn't raised in prosperity. I wasn't raised in an affluent family. Now, we weren't poor. Dad worked hard and kept, kept clothes on our back and food on our table. But uh, we didn't have any to waste. You know, there were a lot of things I wanted that he couldn't afford. But I never went without. Amen. Amen. I mean, I was, from the time I was old enough to drive, I was never without a car. It had been wrecked first and dad rebuilt it, but I had a car, never without a car. I, I wouldn't have known if somebody had given me a brand new car, I wouldn't have known how to drive it because everything I'd ever owned had been wrecked first. Some of them total wrecks, but my dad was a master at rebuilding wrecked cars that most people said, you, you'll never uh, make that look like it came out of the factory. Well, just hide and watch. My dad, when he got through with it, you could not tell it had ever been damaged or wrecked. Amen. And that's what I wanted him to teach me. And that's what I began doing uh, before I went into the ministry. That was the business I had. Okay. But I, did, I never owned a new car until I learned the word. Life's demands distracting you from your true potential. It's time to filter out the noise and live with clear determination. When you order today's exclusive offer, the Power of Focus special package, you'll receive Jerry's inspiring book, Thoughts, The Battle Between Your Ears, and his eye-opening three-part audio series, What It Takes to Stay Focused. In this package, you'll discover how to control negative thoughts, the link between thoughts and actions, secrets to living by divine precision, and steps to align your focus with God's plan. 
Seize this opportunity to refocus your life and begin living with a clear and dedicated vision. Act quickly. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Power of Focus special package. Your journey to a life of divine clarity and purpose starts now. Embrace the power of focus today. Thank you so very much for joining with me today, and I trust our lesson has been a great inspiration to your life. You know, the power to stay focused is one of the most important success skills that you could ever develop. Jesus taught in Mark chapter 4 on the sower sows the word that one of the things that Satan will use to steal the word from you And obviously, if he steals the word from you, he's going to prevent you from experiencing God's best in your life. He said, one of those things that Satan uses is the distractions of the age. The distractions of the age. There are so many distractions out there today. And so it's so important that you stay focused on God's word, stay focused on his promises, and don't let the distractions of the age rob you of experiencing God's best for your life. To help you with this, we have a special offer today, and we have this available, three CDs entitled, What It Takes to Stay Focused. If you've never learned how to stay focused, this series is so important, and I know that it will inspire you and cause you to be able to develop the art of focusing, and when you do, Once again, it is going to help you experience God's best for your life. Right along with that, a book I wrote a number of years ago entitled Thoughts, The Battle Between Your Ears. This is where your greatest battles are fought, right between your ears, in your mind. And if you can cast down imaginations and things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God, then you'll be able to stay focused. And once again, if you're able to stay focused, then praise God, you'll experience God's best. So to order these products and resources, go to our website, jerrysavelle.org, or look on the screen right now for all the ordering information. Please place your order right away. We'll get it to you in by return mail. And I know the moment you receive them, it's going to be a great blessing to your life. Once again, thank you for joining with me. Look forward to sharing with you again on our next broadcast. Before we leave the air today, I want to ask you a question. There may be some of you that have never received Jesus as the Lord of your life. You know, it's very easy. The Bible says if you confess Him as Lord and believe that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. And I want to encourage you to do that right now. And also, I want to uh, encourage you to order this little digital download I wrote a book entitled, You're Somebody Special to God, and we want you to receive it so that you know just how special you are and all that God has planned for you. I'm telling you, God has planned a wonderful life for you, the abundant life. So go to jerrysavelle.org and download this little book. 